Hi, so good morning. Today we're going to discuss the temperature measuring devices. So in this lesson, we, we will discuss the operation of the following temperature measuring devices. Number one, expansion of materials. Number two, electrical resistance change. Number three, the thermistors. Number four, thermocouples. And number five, the pyrometers. So let's get started. Hi, so last time we discussed the basic concept and terminologies in process control system. And we also discussed this block diagram here. So we have the process, we have the measuring element, and then the controller, and, the, and then so on and so forth. Okay, so starting from this uh, block diagram here, one of the important elements here is this measuring element. So dito na papasok yung mga sensors natin. So that is why in the succeeding videos we will have we will discuss how to measure the uh, physical quantities such as temperature, pressure, flow, humidity, so on and so forth using force measuring elements or sensors. So in the first, uh, the first measuring element that we're going to discuss is the most common is the temperature. So on board, temperature is very, very important. So for example, in our previous discussion, we discussed yung sa seawater system natin. Okay? So in this system na... We have uh, seawater from the yung low suction natin, papasok dito, and then papasok dito sa uh, diesel generator fresh coolers natin. So, the temperature is uh, held constant. Okay? May temperature measurement dyan. Dito nangyayari yan. So, yung temperature natin, pinifeed natin sa ating controller. So, in this particular example here, yung temperature natin dito is 20 degrees centigrade. So, there is a measuring here. Another example is yung sa, yung sa generators natin, yung sa diesel generators. When we take a look at the system here, lahat ng T na nakita natin dyan are measuring temperature. So for example, pinaka-obvious na temperature uh, measurement dyan is dito sa generators natin. We have six temperature measurements here for our, for each cylinders. And we also have the temperature here. Yung sa lob oil pumps natin, yung sa lob oil natin, papasok dito. So, there is a temperature here. Dito din, dito. Lahat ng mga T's dyan, temperature yan. So, I would like to highlight this one that temperature measurement tools are very, very important, especially on board or uh, in, in industry. Okay, so the first uh, device is the, of course, the most common is the measurement of temperature using the expansion of liquid. Okay, the expansion of liquid. So, the most common na ginagamit natin uh, previously is yung sa mercury natin, di ba? Ito yung pag, pag pumupunta ka sa hospital dati, so may thermometer na nilalagay, tapos yung loob niyan, yung itong nasa loob dyan, mercury yan. So, take note, mercury is uh, a metal in liquid form. Okay, so... This is the most temperature reading device, which is mercury. Okay, and then the operating range between uh, 30 degrees Fahrenheit to 800 degrees Fahrenheit or a negative 35 degrees centigrade to 450 uh, degrees centigrade. Uh, high linear coefficient of expansion are clearly visible and non-wetting. So, siguro ang mahirap lang dito na term is high linear coefficient of expansion. What does it mean? The linearity of a device, especially sa mga temperature measuring devices natin, ang ibig sabihin lang yan is an increase in temperature, constant yung changes ng dito sa calibration natin. So, for example, from 20 to 25, so, fix yan dito. At yung changes naman pagdating dito sa 75 to 100, same lang yung calibration natin. So, there is a linear. So, if you're going to graph that one, linear lang. Of course, straight lang yan. So, parang ganito. <laughs> parang ganyan lang yung concept natin. So, linear. Naka-straight lang yan. Kasi in some of the uh, other uh, measuring devices are non-linear. So, parang nag-exponential nag yung, yung, yung graph niya, which is not, not that good. Okay? So, clearly visible kasi nakikita mo yung measurement mo. Kali lang. And then, wetting. Next is, ah, this is very important here. 
mercury are being discouraged nowadays because of high toxicity. So, pag na, na bali yan, so mercury is very dangerous. So, that is why uh, mercury is being replaced by another other uh, material which is very similar to mercury, have similar properties of mercury except the toxicity. Okay? Very accurate but not toxic. So, operating range. So, this mga ganito pa rin yung parang thermometer na non-mercury type so the operating range, range from negative 300 to 1000 so medyo tumaas siya ng konti okay? and, or negative uh, 7, 170 degrees centigrade to 530 degrees centigrade so these thermometers are inexpensive and have good accuracy of less than 0 0.1 degrees and and of course, linearity. So, yan yung concept na, yan yung concern natin. Na dapat, every deviation should be approximately equal. So, walang, there's, walang sudden change in a particular, okay, change in temperature. So, next is, eto, this is the bimetallic strip. This is very common concept. So, by definition, a bimetallic strip is relatively uh, inaccurate. Rajad temperature measuring device which is slow to respond and has hysteresis. So the device is low cost and therefore is used uh, extensively in all of types. So the keyword there is uh, not inaccurate and normally used in uh, on of types application or for local analog applications not requiring high accuracy but it is normally used to give uh, remote analog indication. Bimetallic strip natin, yung concept ng bimetallic strip on the word itself, dalawang metals. So, the bimetallic strip for in this particular case here, dalawang metals na pinagdikit mo. Na pinagdikit mo, so in this case here, the steel at saka yung, yung brass. Okay, the steel and brass. So, pag ininit mo yan, pag exposed to heat, so there is an expansion. So, from thermodynamics natin, if a metal is being exposed to heat, so, it produces, uh, it, it expands or contracts. Okay? So, tingnan natin yung operation. Okay? So, yan. Pag pinainit mo yan, there is an increase. So, increase of temperature and then there is a de deflection here. We call that one as deflection. So, pag wala na naman yung, wala na yung uh, temperature, so, bumabalik siya sa normal normal level niya or normal form. So, that is why yan, yung changes na to, yung deflection natin from this point here to that point here, we can measure that deflection using this formula here. So, D is the deflection 3 times the alpha, alpha A minus alpha B. The alpha A is the linear coefficient. Diba yung sa thermodynamics natin, that's the linear coefficient of the first material. And I will give you some tables later on. The B here, the AB, that's the linear coefficient, the second material. And then T2 minus T1. The T1 here, the T2 is the, is the final temperature. The final temperature natin. And then yung T1 natin, that's the initial temperature. Initial temperature yan. And then the L here stands for the length. The length of our material. The length. And then... Our T is the thickness. Okay, so let's try to solve some examples here. So, for example, a straight bimetallic strip of 2.5 cm long and 1.4 mm thick is made of copper and invar. So, the lawang materials, copper and invar. If we're going to illustrate that one, so parang ganyan yung concept natin. Lawang material, so copper and invar. Uh, has one end fixed, so one end fixed. How much will the free end of the strip? So, ito yung free end natin. Ito yung free end natin. Free end of the strip will deflect if the temperature changes from 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So, the formula that we're going to use is, of course, yung discuss natin kanina. So, yan. So, the three, yung alpha natin, uh, we will use this formula at uh, this table here. So, paano ba natin ito gamitin? So, of course, ito yung mga materials dito. Yan yung mga materials dyan. Yan, at saka yung dito sa kabila. 
Okay? Yung materials dyan, sige lang. Yung alcohol, brass. And then, eto naman, this is the linear coefficient. Okay? Yung hin etong naka-open and close parenthesis, yan yung naka-degree centigrade. So, pag ang given ng temperature mo is degrees Fahrenheit, ang gamitin mo is itong 11.3, 9.4, 7.8. Pag degree centigrade naman, so you're going to use yung naka-open and close parenthesis. Okay? Same with this one here. Uh, parehas lang yan. Times 10 raised to the power of negative 6. Okay? So, the T2 minus T1 and then L. So, let's try to substitute the values here. Ayan. Yung 3 natin is constant. So, 9.4, that is for the copper. O, bakit 9.4 yung ginamit niya? Kasi yung, yung temperature changes natin is naka degrees Fahrenheit. So, in this particular case, degrees Fahrenheit, so, ang gamitin natin yung hindi naka-open parenthesis. So, for the copper, ano bang value ng copper natin? That is 9.4. 9.4 yung copper natin. And then, the invar is 0.67. So, that is minus 0.67. Sir, saan galing yung 10 raised to the power of negative 6? Itong lahat ng mga values dito is times 10 raised to the power of negative 6. So, that is my 10 raised to the power of negative 6 yan. Okay? And then, uh, sir, nawala yung T2 minus T1. So, ano yung T2 minus T1? Take note, guys, in our thermodynamics natin, the T2 minus T1, that is delta T, the change in temperature. So, pag walang nakasulat na final temperature at saka initial temperature, tapos temperature change yung nakalagay, so, automatic, yung 18 natin, yung change of temperature natin, uh, ilagay na lang natin diretso. Okay? Automatic na yan. So, multiplied by uh, L natin, the length of 25 centimeters. So, 25 centimeters yan. So, bakit 25-25? Take note, yung squared natin is we have to multiply it by itself. So, para mas makita lang natin, so yung L natin dito is 25 times 25 kasi squared yan. Divided by the thickness there. The thickness is 1.4 millimeter. Sir, bakit naging 0.14 yan? Okay, ito yan. As an engineer, dapat we should know how to use this formula. Okay? There should be an alignment of your uh, consistency of your Units, hindi pwede na dito sa taas, centimeter ka, tapos dito sa baba, millimeters ka. So, you have to be very, very consistent here. So, pag centimeters ang ginamit mo, centimeters all throughout. Pag millimeters, millimeters all throughout. So, in this particular case here, since yung 25 natin dito, ah, since yung 2.5, 25 or 2.5, okay? So, since yung value natin dyan, 25, yeah, 25. So, since yung 25 natin dito, naka centimeter yan, so we have to convert this a 1.4 millimeter to centimeter. So, ang gawin mo lang, pag millimeter to centimeter yan, uh, i-move mo lang yung decimal point to the left. Okay? One decimal point to the left. That is why, ganyan. Okay? So, we already discussed that one, yun sa physics at sa other subjects natin. So, using your calculator, you know how to solve this one. So, equals mo lang. So, the answer is 2.1 uh, centimeter. So, ibig sabihin, yung deflection natin dito is 2.1. Mag-bend yan. Yung sa dulo niya ng 2.1 centimeters. Okay? So, let's proceed. Another example here. So, ito naman yung spiral natin. Yung spiral natin, yung maka. Ayan. So, same pa rin ang concept kanina. If, if a metal is heated, so mag expand dyan dyan. So, tingnan natin na. Yeah, so, nag-expand na yan dyan, nag-expand. So, there are some thermometers that uses that kind of application. So, ito yung spiral thermometer natin. So, yan, di ba? So, pag init yung temperature natin, ito mag-expand yan. So, pag nag-expand yan, yung pointer natin, yung needle natin, pumupunta doon sa positive side. Okay? Yan, tapos bumabalik naman. Pag bumababa yung temperature. So, yan yung uh, simple... Application natin, simple application for our uh, spiral thermometers. The other one is the helical. Ito yung common ginagamit natin. Uh, the helical by metallic oil. So, yan yun. So, basically, ang concept lang yan, same pa rin, expansion pa rin of metal. So, pag iinit yan, uh, ito mag expand yan, mag expand Tapos, ito, baka malito kayo, this is the zero part here, the 10, and then increase yan papunta doon. Okay? So, Normally, paano ba natin ito nilalagay? 
Uh, for example, yung tank natin, may tank, uh, butasan mo yung tank mo, and then, ito yung ipasok mo. Ipasok mo yan, tapos may nut man yan. Ito nut, ayaw parang yan. Pasok mo, screw mo doon. So, ito yung mag-measure. Ito yung expose sa, sa uh, heat, uh, heating natin, sa, sa material natin na minimeasure. So, for example, uh, fuel or water. So, ito yan. We measure yan dyan. So, ibig sabihin, pag mainit na dito banda, there will be an expansion of your metal here. Mag-expand yan siya. And then, ito, gagalaw yan. So, let's, let's take a look. Okay? So, there is an expansion here. And then, ito, ang um, tataas. And then, pag bababa naman yung temperature, ito, babalik yan. Okay? So, that is the concept of the helical by metallic coil. So, in order to solve the deflection, hindi naman to same kanina kasi this is the helical, so we're going to use this formula here. So, the D is the deflection. The 9 is constant, of course. The A and B, ito yan, same kanina, that's the linear coefficients. And then, the T2 minus T1, the change in temperature. And then, yung R natin is the radius, radius nito. And then, the L is the length, 4 is constant, and then the T is the thickness. Okay, so let's try to solve some examples here. So, for example, uh, 42. 42 ba yan? Yan, a 42 centimeter length. So, yung L natin. And then, 2.3 millimeter thick copper invar by metallic strip is wound into a spiral with a radius of, so basically, in drawing hands, parang ganyan. With a radius of 5.2. Guys, we have to be very careful. Radius yan, ha? Radius yan. So, pag naka-diameter yan, you have to divide that value there para makuha yung radius natin. Right? Kasi diameter, a radius is half your diameter. Ha? Concepts ato ang uh, basic uh, properties of our circle. So, at 70 degrees centigrade, what is the deflection of the strip at, ah, sorry, Fahrenheit, 70 degrees, what is the deflection of the strip at 100 degrees Fahrenheit? So, let's Para hindi ka malito, you write the formula first, you write the formula, and then you try to identify kung anong mga bal, ano yung mga given natin dyan. Okay? So, isulat mo yung formula. So, yan yung formula natin, yung diniscuss natin kanina. 9 is constant, of course. Okay? Ilagay na lang natin yung table natin. Same ng table natin kanina. And then, i-discuss natin saan banda kinuha yan. So, the first is 9. Sulat mo yung 9. Open, close, parenthesis, the alpha of A. So, yung A natin, same lang, copper in bar. So, yung copper natin, take note ano bang mga uh, temperature scale natin, naka-degrees Fahrenheit. So, ibig sabihin, ang gamitin natin, itong mga hindi naka-close parenthesis. So, yung copper natin kanina, 9.4, so 9.4 pa rin dyan, minus the AB, the second material, the in bar. The in bar natin is 0 0.67. So, nandyan, minus 0 0.67. Saan galing yung 10 times... Raise to the power of negative 6, dito yan sa, ito yan, lahat ng mga linear, linear coefficients natin, times 10 raised to the power of negative 6 yan. So yan, automatic, lagay mo times 10 raised to the power of negative 6, multiply to 120, so saan to galing? The T2 here is the final temperature. So, ang gusto natin dito, ito yung normal temperature, 70 degrees centigrade Fahrenheit, and then expose natin to heat to increase the temperature to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So, yung final temperature natin dito is dito, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So, 120 minus the 70. Yan yung 70 natin. So, 120, 70. Yung T1 natin. And then, the radius natin dito of 5.2 centimeters, guys. We have to be very consistent with our unit here. So, 5.2. 5.2 yung radius. Length natin is 42. 42, so may 42 dyan, divided by the 4, and then the thickness natin, oh, ito na naman. The thickness natin, normally thickness kasi nakabilimeters yan, kasi napakaliit. So that is why we have to be very careful when substituting the values to our formula. So, yung 2.3, convert natin to uh, millimeter. Ah, yung millimeter natin na 2.3, convert natin to centimeter. Para yung magiging final output natin, centimeter. Okay? So, Move lang natin to ng one decimal place to the left. So, magiging millimeter na yan. So, just use your calculator. Better kung may scientific calculator ka. 
So, equals mo lang yan. The answer is 0 0.93 centimeters. Okay? So, next. So, ito na. The next uh, temperature sensor that we're going to discuss is the resistance uh, temperature devices or commonly known as RTD. Okay? So, let's take a look at the definition here. So, an RTD is a temperature sensor which measures temperature using the principle that a resistance of a material changes with a temperature. Okay? So, yan yan. Yung resistance natin is directly related, directly proportional to the temperature. Okay? So, in practice, an electrical current is transmitted through a piece of metal located in proximity to the area where the temperature is to be measured. So later on, we are take, we're going to take a look at that. So operating ranges at negative 300 to 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 170 to 780 degrees centigrade. So basically, yung concept niyan ng RTD is using this kind of, ayan yung RTD na din. So same pa rin kanina, uh, may butas dyan, ito lang yung pinapasok natin. Okay, pasok mo doon. Then, ma-measure natin. Okay, so, so, this RTD uses this formula here. Ito yung resistance natin. So, this is the final resistance. So, the changes in resistance there, later on, makita natin, will result to the change in voltage. In voltage natin, yun yung mini-measure natin. And then, yung voltmeter natin is calibrated to measure the temperature. Later on, we will take a look at that. So, this is the R total, the final resistance value. The RT1, that is the first, the first resistance, total resistance, 1 minus the coefficient, the coefficient of material use, of course, the change in, in temperature. Okay, this is very common formula as what we have discussed sa thermodynamics or sa uh, electrotechnology. Okay? So, basically, yung concept ng RTD natin is parang ganito. So, you have a resistor here. So, etong red line na to, ito yung supply natin. This device is constantly supplied by a current. Uh, tinatawag natin yung current source. So, yung current source natin, nagbibigay yan, nagbibigay yan ng kuryente towards our resistor. Then, pabalik dito. Okay? So, any changes in temperature will result in change of resistance. Mag-change yung value ng resistance natin dito. So, in this black diagram here, uh, in this uh, diagram here, ito yung current source natin. May resistance ka dyan. And then dito, ito yung mag-change. Okay? Mag-change ng, ng value ng resistance depende on the temperature. So, anong nangyayari dyan? We have to take note that if that the resistance increases, yung voltage drop increases. Diba? Tataas mo itong resistance natin. So, diba? Sa electro wire natin. So, if the value of our resistance here increases, tataas yan. Pag tataas yan, yung voltage drop dito, tataas din yan. So, pag tataas yung voltage drop natin dito, it will be measured by the voltmeter here, connected in parallel. Kasi take note again, in our electrotechnology, both meters are connected in parallel to the load that we are going to measure. And then, a meter is connected in series. Okay? Both meter parallel, uh, a meter connected in series. So, yan yung both meter natin. Both meter natin will measure the voltage here. Let, pag tataas yung temperature, the resistance increases. Pag tumaas yung resistance natin, the voltage increases, which is measured by our both meter here. So, ito na yung blue dito. Yung blue line na yan. Connected to our voltmeter here. So, yung voltmeter natin, magtataas yung tataas. So, this needle is being calibrated para mag-reflect siya ng, ng instead na values ng voltahe dito, uh, temperature na. So, kinakalibrate yan. Okay, so that's the basic concept of uh, RTD or resistance temperature devices. Okay? So, pag medyo nalito kayo, just go back to the just repeat the video lang. Okay? But the concept is, the change in temperature will result to the change in resistance. 
the change of resistance will result in a change in voltage. The change of voltage is calibrated to measure the change in temperature. Okay. So yeah. So for example, we have an example here. So what is the resistance? So you final resistance natin of a platinum resistor at 430 480 degrees centigrade. If its resistance at 16 degrees centigrade is 110 ohms. Basically, that's the formula that we are going to use. And then, so the R total, uh, R total, the, the second, ito yung hinahanap natin, the resistance at the, at T2, the resistance at, so what is there is at 480. So yung initial niya is, at 16 degrees centigrade, yung resistance natin is 110. So that is why, if we're going to substitute that one, yung RT1 natin, that is 110, plus the, ito yung problema natin, the coefficient. The coefficient of this platinum resistor here. So, ito yung gamitin natin. So, yung mga materials natin, and then coefficient per. Okay, we have to be very careful again here. This is per degrees centigrade. Okay? Per degree centigrade. So, ibig sabihin yan, dapat yung temperature natin dito, naka-degree centigrade. Ha? Huh? Naka-degree Celsius yan. So, pag naka-Fahrenheit yung dalawa na yan, so, you have to convert that one to Fahrenheit kasi degree centigrade kasi yung unit natin dito sa temperature coefficient natin. Or, the other way around is you find another table na naka-degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? So, the, the easier way is you have to convert this value here. Okay? Kung, kung na, hindi naka-degrees Celsius. And since naka-degrees Celsius man yan, naka-degrees Celsius, so naka-align yan. So, substitute. So, the, the resistance at 480, yan kasi yung hinahanap natin. Hindi yan kasali sa equation na, that is just equal to RT2. RT2 lang yan. So, equals to 110, yung original natin, original na resistance. So, 110 ohms, open close parenthesis, the 1, which is constant, plus the coefficient. Anong coefficient natin ng platinum? 0 0.00385. So, that is 0 0.0385 multiplied to the Temperature change. So, ano yung T2? Guys, hindi pwede magbaliktad to, ha? Hindi pwede magbaliktad yan. So, T2 is the final temperature. What's the final temperature here? At 480. Yan yung gusto natin. And then, yung original temperature, 16 degrees centigrade. Ibig sabihin lang yan, 16 degrees centigrade siya, kinainit mo, a degree, a 16 degrees centigrade, yung resistance niya is 110. Pinainit mo ngayon, Nainit mo ngayon, up to 480 degrees centigrade. So, the question is, at 480 degrees centigrade, ano yung value ng resistance natin? So, yan lang yung concept dito. So, based on this calculation here, substitute mo lang, tapos uh, solve mo using your calculator, the answer is 306. So, 306.5 ohms. So, nakita natin na at 16 degrees centigrade, 110. At 480 degrees centigrade, naging 306.5 ohms. So, there is an increase. An increase na yan. So, naging, pag nag-increase na yung RT natin, yung resistance natin, so, of course, mag-change yung uh, voltage drop. Kung nag-change yung voltage drop, yung deflection ng needle natin, mag-change yan. Okay? So, yan yung basic concept natin ng resistance uh, temperature devices. Okay? So, let's proceed to the next uh, sensor. Ito, yung thermistors. So, by definition, thermistors are act as a passive component in a, in a circuit. Means, pag passive circuit, uh, pag passive element siya, hindi siya nagpro-produce ng, ng any source. So, passive lang. So, they are accurate, cheap, and robust way to measure uh, temperature. So, while they do not work well in extremely hot or cold temperatures, uh, they are uh, sensors, they are the sensor of choice for many different applications. So they are ideal when a precise ito na, precise temperature reading is required. Okay, so operating range typic uh, typically from negative degrees, uh, negative 50 degrees to 300 degrees Celsius. Ito yung common na itsura niya. Iba-iba. So later on sa ating 
uh, laboratory exercise, you're going to take a look at these thermistors here. Th thermistors are very, very common. Okay? Yeah. So next, the thermocouple. So from the word itself, thermocouple, thermo means heat, couple means dalawa, ha? Diba? Yung couple na rin, dalawa lang yan. So that is why yung thermocouple, uh, dalawang metal yan. So, the keywords there, the dalawang metal to measure heat, thermocouple ang gamit natin yan. So, let's take a look at the formal definition. So, thermocouple is a temperature measuring device that uses the Seebeck effect. The Seebeck effect natin, ibig sabihin, ah, ito yung example ng thermocouple natin. Okay, yan yung thermocouple natin. In advance na mga topics natin, yung thermocouple, kinoconnect yan to our uh, Arduino, yung mga microprocessor natin. So, we, we will have that one pagdating natin sa ating uh, laboratory. <clears throat> okay? So, so yung thermo, uh, yung civic effect or the thermoelectric effect is a phenomenon in which effect is converted, in which heat is converted into electrical energy by diffusion of charged particles due to temperature regions. So, ibig sabihin, the word is the word lang that the, the terms that, that we're going to so the bayan so the the keywords the keywords there is just it uses the effect converts heat into electrical energy but basically okay, but before we discuss it much further so let's take a look at the example here Okay, so yan yung we have here, the heat, and then this is a metal here. So, let's try to play the button. So, yan. So, yung blue na nakikita natin dito, yan yung free electrons natin. So, dito sa mainit na part na yan, yung sa mainit na part natin, take a look ha, yung free electrons dito, masyado mabilis yung movement niya na yan nag agitate yan. So, therefore, kung ikaw lang yan, kung pinainit ka, so, di ba, magkisikisi ka, magdali-dali ka, magdali-dali ka, dito ka umando sa bugnaw na part. Okay? Tanawa, nagtapok sila dali na pitas, ha? May bugnaw na part. Okay? So, there is yung tinatawag nating high density of electrons. So, there is, this is the, the low density kasi medyo konti lang yung resistance, resist, uh, electrons natin dito. And this one here is the high density part here. So, yung thermocouple natin is dalawang materials lang na kinoconnect natin dito. Yeah. For example, in this particular case here, a thermocouple, dalawang material, dalawang metals. So, for example here, this is the uh, copper. For example, yung metal A natin is copper. And then, yung metal B natin is iron. Okay? So, ibig sabihin yan, pag pinainit mo dito yan, pinainit mo, Okay, so, pag pinainit mo dyan, yung iron natin, ang ibig sabihin lang sa concept niya, is mas marami yung free electrons dito. Marami yung free electrons dito compared sa free electrons dito sa kabilang metal. So, if there is a difference, di ba, yung concept ng electromotive force natin, if there is a potential difference, so normally kasi, based kay William Dunn, sabi niya, na iron is six times higher sa thermoelectric effect. So, in this particular case here, so there is a potential difference between this one and this one. So, yung heat natin, mati-change mo yan to potential difference or voltage daw. That is the Seebeck effect. So, pag change mo yan, ma-measure mo ngayon millivolts. Millivolts, very, very small, small voltage. So, naka-millivolts na yan. And then, yung changes of temperature dito will be reflected dito sa, sa scale natin. And of course, the scale here is calibrated depende sa imuhang um, temperature scale, degree centigrade or degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? So later on, yung thermocouple natin will be connected to a microcontroller. Connect natin to microcontroller, then yung microcontroller natin, uh, we will, uh, yung microcontroller natin will be connected to LCD para ma or ma-reflect natin kung anong values ng uh, temperature natin. This is very, very important yung thermocouple natin 
when we're going to take a look sa PID natin or sa proportional integral derivative concept natin. Okay? So, yan, of course, this is, these pictures or those videos are credited to the techscience.com. So, the last is the pyrometers. Okay, ito yung pyrometers by definitions are infrared thermometers use the heat radiation. So, diba yung heat transfer natin from our thermodynamics, the heat can be transferred in a form of conduction, convection, or radiation. So, lahat nung isa nun dapat conduction, yung mafe-feel niya dapat. So, in this particular case, the pyrometer is different. Kasi hindi mo kailangan hawakan yung particular object na minimeasure mo. So, by definition, pyrometers or infrared IR thermometers use the heat radiation of objects invisible to human kasi yung IR infrared, the wavelength there is less than the red the wavelength natin. That is why we cannot see that one sa spectrum natin. So, to the human eye to determine the temperature. So, optical pyrometers can be used to measure the temperatures from 110 degrees to uh, 200. So, masyadong mataas. Pwede siya mataas na mga values. So, so ano bang dagway ng pyrometers? So, in this time of crisis ngayon, pyrometers are very important to measure temperature. Kasi hindi mo naman pwede hawakan yung tao. Yan, baka may COVID yan. So, in this particular case, ginagamit yung pyrometers to check. Ito yung mga ginagamit ng mga security guard. Baril-baril, diba? Sa loob. To measure the temperature. So, yun pala, ang konse ang ang device pala natawag doon is uh, infrared thermometers or pyrometers. Okay? So, to to summarize our device, devices, temperature measuring devices, we have the type, the bimetallic, the good. Okay? And yung comparison natin. So, you have to be familiar with the difference here. Okay? You have to be familiar with the difference in linearity, advantage, or disadvantage. Kasi, importante yan when you design your own uh, system. So, for example, uh, bakit ka gagamit ng, saan ba yung expensive? For example, bakit ka gagamit ng RTD or resistance temperature uh, device kung yung application mo is simple lang, hindi kailangan yung accurate. So, pwede ka nasa bimetallic na on-off switching lang yung kailangan natin. Okay, so this is very, very important. So, if you have some questions or clarification, please comment down below the video and I will try to answer your question as soon as I can. So, good luck and see you.